Hello, I am Bentham and welcome back to Factorio Railworld. In the previous episode we started setting up the rocket train which will be delivering various different materials to Cape Kerbal so that uh, various rocket components can be built on site and we can start actually launching rockets from there. So uh, we have the copper supply set up but we still have uh, three and a half cargo wagons to go and uh, the next item on the list is plastic. So we make our way over to the oil outpost to set up a new train. I got the first bits of the framework set up in the last episode, but we ran out of time, so we'll continue it now. We've got, um, we basically extended along the uh, the tracks to make a lot more room to actually uh, work in, and I'm wondering why I didn't do that earlier. I think it was something to do with the uh, uh, the way the signals worked. I didn't want the uh, the different blocks to be too long or something, maybe? I forget what it was. I mean, it was over a year ago at this point, so who knows what uh, younger me was uh, thinking at the time, making it so weirdly cramped. But uh, we've, we've extended it along a bit now and everything looks a bit neater and more spacious, so we'll set up a new train here uh, that we've called in from the main base. I love that I can do that now. Like, I used to... Like, I, I set up the help train and the mini train a long time ago that both had uh, the functionality that they could be called from a distance, but this just makes it so much easier. I can now... E easier? Easier. <laughs> I can now call in any train from anywhere, as long as the, there's a way for it to navigate from where, where it is to where I am. I can get any train uh, where I want at any time from anywhere, and it's fantastic. And I don't know how I went without it. I can now just call in a train from the main base that was just sat there not doing anything, and immediately get it to work delivering some random material around. So I don't really need the, um, the help train anymore, or the mini train. Um, I mean, some people might not even know what they are. It was a very long time ago I made them. The help train is the random one at the bottom of the screen there that is supposed to deliver various emergency materials to points around the lake if I set up a uh, an outpost and I think call it help. It, maybe it was help or maybe it was A, something like that. And there was a similar thing, I think, with the mini train where I could call it into um, to the midpoint if needed to deliver a couple of bits and bobs that, um, that didn't need the mega train uh, to bring them uh, and stuff like that. They are sort of pointless now. I can just call them in normally. I mean, it's fine that they're sat where they are. I can just get rid of their their um, their um schedules and do it manually, basically. And it, I guess it could be quicker to set up the station like that, but it, yeah, the, the the tools have made things a lot more convenient now. But yeah, and, and I, I digress. We've got the uh, the train in place and we've started getting the uh, the plastic being delivered in, and so suddenly the, the, the plastic system is going at full pelt and uh, we're running down our, uh, our supply of petroleum gas, so I get some uh, some more cracking plants in place to try and uh, mitigate that a bit. We probably need more than the two that I add, but uh, it's a start, and we'll see where things go from there. The thing is that uh, like we'll probably just start burning through our uh, uh, light oil supply as well if we uh, if we put a lot of cracking plants in. So we'll put in two and see how that goes, uh, and go from there. But yeah, we're probably going to need more oil uh, supply to keep everything running here, because not only do we need a bunch of plastic, we also need a bunch of solid fuel, so I'll have to set up a system for that as well, and get that sorted. So, yeah, so we've got this one train, it's going to have the, the plastic and the solid fuel loaded into it, and then it's just going to go down to the south station array that I still haven't come up with a proper name for, and um, park up right next to the rocket train, so that things can very quickly be belted in. Because um, we could use like the, the the train that goes to the main base, but that's already sort of at capacity. We could put another cargo wagon on it, but um, it makes more sense to have another one that goes straight to where the stuff actually needs to be delivered, rather than to vaguely closer. Um, so yeah, we'll have this new one. I forget if I give it a name really. I guess I'll just call it the plastic train or the fuel, the solid fuel train. Plastic train rolls off the tongue a bit better. Uh, though th that is what I used to call the train that runs to the main base from the oil outpost. I could call it the oil train. That's too confusing. I'll work it out. I'll, I'll, yeah, whatever. Um, so yeah, this um, this uh, station gets called plastic loading, um, even though there's multiple plastic loading places around the place at this point. And then we go over to the uh, the south station array and set it up on the other end. We basically get it delivering to South Three, which we rename to plastic unloading. And um, this is our first sort of usage of the, it's sort of. Ruins it though, because like the whole point of these stations that I set up here is that they perfectly fit uh, trains with two cargo wagons and have queuing space. And then the first one I've actually given a job to, I've made it like deliver, uh, I made it unload a train with one cargo wagon, so that messes it up a bit, but it's the most convenient place. We still have three of them left that we can put a list of in. We're sort of using uh, the South One station for uh, the loading of uh, of concrete for any uh, journeys we take up to the um, 
up to Cape Kerbal at the moment. And two and four are currently unused. Uh, the sort of idea I had when I was setting them up was that they would replace the current stations we have on the North Station Array um, so that we could have queuing and stuff properly set up, but so far I've not bothered with it because we don't have that many trains delivering there anyway. We might get a bit more stuff going now though that we're using uh, like insane amounts of, uh, of copper for, the, um, for Cape Kerbal that might start needing a bit more delivering. Because I think we only have the one, uh, like, furnace array of copper at the moment, because uh, once we uh, moved circuit production over to a separate outpost, the uh, the copper demand went down quite considerably. We might need to set it back up again now, or maybe get some being delivered in from the circuit outpost or something. We'll work it out. What is more likely is that we'll have shortages in other areas that are worse than we have in copper anyway, such as solid fuel, which I start um, looking at setting up now. And, uh, of course... We'll need a lot more chemical plants than we do. We've got one at the moment, and that was just about enough to get a, a vaguely decent supply of rocket fuel for a single rocket. And yeah, we want more than that. So what I'm thinking is 10, maybe 20 um, chemical plants, and that is going to destroy the oil supply, but um, we'll just have to deal with that and work it out. Uh, so yes, yeah, so I go back to the main base to get some um, some chemical plants. And I realised I don't actually have any chemical plant production, or at least I can't see it. Maybe it's buried uh, amongst all these random uh, bits and bobs everywhere. But as far as I can tell, I never actually set up a uh, assembler for chemical plant production. So we start putting one in place. And conveniently uses the exact same materials as a pump jack. So we can just extend along these belts a little bit and set it up right next to it without any trouble. And start getting them crafted for us, because crafting them manually is sometimes tedious. Usually, I only need one or two at once, but this time, needing 10 or 20, um, it, I, I cannot be bothered making those all in the hotbar. So we start getting that working. Uh, but I realise that's going to be slow as well, so I basically just uh, use my hotbar as well. I make 10 in my hotbar, 10 in the assembler, and that way we'll get them made uh, as soon as possible. And uh, go from there. I don't know, like, I don't know whether we'll need the, the whole amount or not. I wouldn't be surprised, though. Um, it's a case, basically, of getting a system set up so that we can see how the rocket production goes at the other end, work out what is lacking and what isn't, and then uh, go from there. Also on my way out, I set up some uh, some uh, pipe storage because I'm fed up of crafting my own pipes. It's so annoying when you make anything involved in the uh, in oil production. You always need to make, like, 20 pipes before you can actually make the uh, um, the structure itself, and that always takes up, like, half or more of the time, uh, so that's a lot of faff that we can avoid by setting up just a bit of storage next to the um, uh, the pipe production over in the engine assembly. We probably have some pipe production somewhere else, but I just set up another one because I couldn't find it when I glanced around for two seconds. So we go over to the oil outpost again and we can start setting up the, um, uh, the piping of the light oil to the right place. There's a sulfur pipe that's sort of in the way, or we think it is until we change our plan. Uh, so I end up getting like, random sulfur into my inventory and faffing about trying to get that back into a train, but we get that sorted and we start putting in the chemical plants. And conveniently there's the perfect uh, little bit of space here to, to set them all up in. Uh, there's enough room for the output um, the output belts and some power supplies and stuff. I mean at this point we can use landfill to make things a lot easier, but I'm still trying to avoid it if possible. So far I've not used it a single time uh, in Rail World. I only used it in the, the, the the sort of test game I did for um, for the 0.13 update video, which is sort of an alternate history, the uh, uh, that one where I just started landfilling the random bit next to the solar panels. They always end up being alternate histories because otherwise I'd start messing up my factory. Uh, particularly in like the 0.12 update, I I tore my factory apart getting that uh, silo built as as quickly as possible. Um, I tried to bring it in with commands, to be honest, but I couldn't work out how to do it, so I gave up and just, like, actually made the thing um, myself before making the video. Uh, but anyway, we uh, have uh, an array of 12 uh, chemical plants now for the, the solid fuel, using uh, light oil, of course, that is the most efficient way to make solid fuel, uh, the way it works out with the different amounts you get from the different fractions. Uh, light oil is the... Uh, it gives you the most... Uh, solid fuel for what you put in. Uh, even accounting for cracking and things like that. And yeah, so I do shrink it slightly because I realize with making 20 I might as well make like two arrays of 10 or whatever. So I start with the one, see what that looks like, and then we'll go from there. Uh, conveniently this is right next to the, the train that needs to load it. So we can just uh, 
put an underground built-in, a splitter, and we're there. So, um, we'll see how that goes, and um, I imagine this won't be enough. I think this is going to be one of the, the weak links. I think another one will be electric engines, because we only need, like, a stack of those per visit of the train, but I just don't... I have one assembler working on it, and that's not going to be enough. Uh, yeah, but I, I feel like solar fuel production is pretty low, um, and also we are burning through our oil supply at a, a pretty... Uh, high rate, so this is sort of, it's, we're not going to see production like this for a while uh, in the future once everything runs down and it all becomes uh, a lot more difficult to actually get any made. We're going to have to get some more oil or do something about it. And we're checking up on, uh, on various other trains there, seeing how the loading is going on the, the main oil train. And uh, we find that uh, once again there is a, a traffic jam over at the busiest uh, intersection in the network. Uh, thanks to the train I just set up, the one delivering the plastic and the solid fuel, I'd forgotten to set up any means of actually loading it with coal, so it just stopped at the most inopportune moment and blocked everything from going. And I counted there were 15 trains waiting to move uh, uh, through that um, that junction when I finally spotted it and fixed it. It is quite cool how that can happen. I've said it before, uh, whenever, like I say it pretty much every time a, a pileup happens. Uh, I say pile up, that's a crash really. Every time a, a gridlock or whatever happens over there, um, it's just so cool to see so many trains that all have their own jobs, that all have some purpose to them, um, like interacting. And just ha having a network that big is just awesome. It's the entire reason that I made this series. And the entire reason that I carried it on, on well beyond um, its end in like episode 34. We're, we're now at triple nearly the, uh, the number of episodes since we actually finished the game. Um, or didn't, because I, I just went, nope, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to place the uh, the rocket defense as it was then. I'm just going to keep going because I, I love this. I love this, uh, this save and uh, this series. And uh, so do all you guys. This is still, I think, my most watched one. People are still watching this more than Towns, which in a certain way is a shame, but um, I still appreciate it. I love both series uh, for their own uh, individual reasons. Um, yeah, this one, one is definitely fun for just, like, the giant rail network. I don't think Towns' network will ever get quite as big uh, as this one. It's more about the intricacy with uh, with Towns and, the, uh, and following interesting rules and making something unique. Now, uh, but anyway, we've got the, uh, the train delivering in the solid fuel and uh, getting it all loaded in. And at this point, I realise that I have messed up slightly, I think, um, because I forgot to consider the, um, the stack sizes when I was working out the ratios for the train. At least I think I forgot. I'll have to check back at my working, but I seem to remember that I just looked at how many blocks and assumed that everything stacked in hundreds, but solar fuel does not. It stacks in fifties, meaning we need twice the storage we currently have. There is room on this train and the loading area at the other end for a fifth cargo wagon, so I could just do that to fix it, uh, but it might be enough to just, like, tweak a couple of, um, of the, uh, the, the, the cargo wagons to favor the um, the solid fuel a little bit more. We'll have to see how it works out. It might just be a case of sending the train to Cape Kerbal and seeing uh, how wrong I've got it, really. Um, and yeah, going uh, to back to the drawing board. I wish I had a drawing board. I have a notebook. And, uh, and working out um, if I did count those or not and how much of a faff it will be uh, if I don't uh, do anything about it. But anyway, one way I can help to solve the uh, the solid fuel problem and just get as much being made as possible is to add in another 10 chemical plants. I don't know if I need these, but I'm guessing that I do, so I just set them up and um, it'll hopefully save time later. We'll at least be able to store up a bunch of extra solid fuel in the meantime, though we are already uh, running down our supply of oil, so perhaps that didn't really matter. Um, but yeah, the... Um, the oil supply, I think, may have, like, it's already gone from a full tank to an empty tank, I think, in this time since I set it up. I think definitely by the end of the episode it might be an empty tank. And uh, I check it there, but too briefly for me to see at uh, a triple speed. Uh, speaking of which, it's always funny how, like, people are constantly asking me if this is actually sped up. Um, because they've just started watching in the middle of episode 90, whatever. Um, and it, it's like... I, I, I'm so tempted so many times to be like, oh no, I just play at triple speed because I'm amazing. The, the honest answer is that actually I'm very terrible at normal speed. And part of the reason I do triple speed is because I'd be frustrating at normal speed. A, a lot of people get annoyed with uh, with how slow I go in stuff like living with biters, which I'd need to 
get going with again. I sort of I was going to do episode 100 and then things messed up and then 0.13 came out and everything sort of got messed up. I will continue that at some point. I've not given up on it. I can't give up on it now. We've got to do the war. It's got to happen. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm I'm quite slow really, and so this sort of way of uh, of like tripling the the video speed and commentating over it at the end uh, works well for me. But anyway, we make our way up to the northmost point of our main base area, um, if you can even consider it that. It's sort of like the, the, the mid-base. It's not like in the outer reaches, but it's sort of halfway there um, to check up on the on Oil Outpost 3, uh, which is the one Oil Outpost where we haven't implemented speed modules, and so I implement speed modules because now we desperately need them. Uh, we just need every little bit of oil that we can squeeze out of the ground, basically. All of these pump jacks are at 0.1 production, um, but I, th I forget what the bonus is. I think it's something like 60% maybe, so, you know, we, we add, like, uh, it's, it's not a, a... There's something there. It makes a difference. It doesn't make much of a difference. Like, <laughs> we get something like four barrels from this outpost each uh, trip with the train, which is not much, and now it's more like six, and that, yeah, that's not... We need more. We need more than that. And it becomes clear to me that we need to set up a new oil outpost somewhere because we've got all of them on speed modules now and it's still not enough. So uh, back at the oil outpost, we do check up a bit on the, the, the various fractions. I think at the moment, like, we might be burning through the fractions quicker than they can be resupplied by the refineries as well as the problem with the oil running out and stuff. It's, it's all a mess. The system wasn't built to deal with this sort of production rate. Um, I mean, it might have been alright with the plastic, but um, the addition of the solid fuel is just is just too much. And um, yeah, we put productivity modules level 3 in literally everything here to try and, and push our um, oil as far as we possibly can, because I don't like oil outposts. They're, they're, they're faff to set up, and it's annoying, and I don't like them. And I, I wish I'd set the oil settings a little bit higher here so I could just have one giant uh, outpost in the middle of... Uh, of the factory, well, it wouldn't be an outpost if it was in the middle of the factory. One giant outpost near to the factory that I could just use for all my oil forever, but uh, alas, we just don't have enough. We've got to go settle uh, new areas. So I have a check of the map, and there's a nice spot over to the um, to the west. I think it's the west. I always get my compass direction. It's it's the west, and um, we start setting. We start grabbing the various materials we'll need, uh, productivity modules, so we can get. Uh, as much out of the uh, the outpost as possible, and we actually like take all the remaining productivity modules that we have. I have to set up some new uh, production with uh, alien artifacts for it, so that the the next oil outpost that we inevitably have to build uh, can be uh, running at a, a good speed as well. And uh, then we start grabbing the train for it. And annoyingly, there's a train full of wood still set up here. I'd need to set up my wood and loading station. I was going to do that and like have a nice like uh, fairly regularly running wooden loading train going between Cape Coval and the main base but I've just been so busy with setting up the rocket train and we're, st we're still only like half done with that we still have two cargo wagons to go one of which has like ten different things in it so that's uh, a bit awkward uh, but we take the train over uh, to our new uh, area for our oil base and uh, start putting in the tracks for it get the train parked up. I don't bother with setting up a, a, like a special branch for this one because the oil is uh, so close to the rail network that uh, we can just have a little bit of a siding to put the train in and uh, that will be fine. Get the station set up and this will be oil 4. I don't know why I call them just oil. It's supposed because I call the oil outpost oil outpost. So these ones are just oil um, which is sort of backwards really to how I do it with it, the rest of the system where I do outpost for the outposts and then just the, the, the material for the... Um, the unloading area. But we get the pump jack set up, we put six in place. I thought there were seven annoyingly, so I took one extra than I needed to, but whatever, we, we it's like there's not much of a difference. Uh, I do mess up with the, the signals, so one of the trains ends up trying to get into the wrong place and getting stuck and starting to hold things up. Not many trains come this way though anyway, so it wouldn't have caused too much problem. I did notice there that one of the, um, the iron trains going to Iron Outpost 3 actually had an empty cargo wagon, so I do need to check on uh, exactly why that is. Perhaps we're using um, a bit too much uh, iron at the moment. Though the factory shouldn't have too much to do, copper's going to be the main thing, um, and it, th that's probably still fine. I don't think copper will be the limiting factor, even though we've only got one um, production column working there. We actually have less copper production in the main base than we do in the in the circuit outpost, 
Uh, but I think that'll be fine. I think there'll be many other limiting factors that are worse than that. Uh, which is why we're trying to sort out the oil thing. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I start getting the, the pipe set up and uh, we'll put in a, uh, a, a holding tank, or whatever it's called, something or other tank. So it begins with a, with a H. I've forgotten. Uh, but yeah, we'll put, we'll put in a tank for the oil. We probably don't really need it because there'll never be any oil left in the pipes here. It'll all be turned immediately into uh, into barreled oil to be delivered over to the oil outpost. And we got our assembler array set up and everything. And uh, we'll put our tank in. Uh, but I realize, maybe, maybe I thought H because of fluid handling. I don't know. I'm getting sidetracked here. But yes, as I set up the pump jacks and I went to put in the, um, uh, the modules, I suddenly realized... I'd made a mistake because when I looked at the uh, the amount of oil in each of the wells, it was not 0.1, and I suddenly realised I've already built an oil outpost here. Many many episodes ago, we're talking over a year. There was an oil outpost here. It was oil outpost two, and it got blown up by biters. And I decided not to bother rebuilding it because all the oil was depleted. And it's been so long since that happened, I'd completely forgotten it existed and built another oil outpost on the same deposit. Um, so that's not going to be as useful to us as I expected, but it, it does still help a little bit. We will have to set up another oil outpost in the next episode. Well done to anyone, by the way, who spotted that before I did, because it took me a very long time to... Um, uh, it's, it's been so long since we did that now. It, it's weird just how long this series has been running. But that's all we have time for today. I shall say goodbye, thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time.